Hello and welcome to this video on UFT1, executing the order to cache business process flow in SAP GUI for HTML rendered in the Fiori interface. For this video, we are executing using our market leading AI object detection capability, which utilizes computer vision and uh, optical character recognition to identify objects on the screen the same way a human does. The advantage of this capability is that the underlying object properties don't matter. So as you get new transports into your SAP environment, or you get new patches, or you roll out a new version or transformation, the script will just continue to work instead of having to go in and edit the underlying object properties. The other advantage of utilizing it this manner is that you can grab the objective evidence needed for regulatory audits because the objects will have fully rendered on the screen. The disadvantage is that those objects have to fully render on the screen in order to interact against them. Using properties based, you actually make a method call into the browser's DOM in the case of Fiori or other web applications, the document object model, and as soon as that object is present in the DOM, you can proceed. The downside of that is that, one, you're relying on those object properties to not change, which they frequently do, and second, you frequently, if you're grab it, capturing a snapshot, will capture a blank screen or the previous screen in your snapshot because the browser hasn't finished rendering. Now, acting against the uh, user interface in this method also allows you to start doing user experience testing. So we've had many customers who have utilized this capability and caught UX defects or user experience defects, things like a white text on a gray background. You and I wouldn't be able to see this, but the object's there. From a properties perspective, it's there, it's present, and it's being and it's able uh, to be rendered. From a user experience perspective, it's not visible, so it's not actually there. Utilizing this AI object detection allows you to find those type of issues. So the other thing that you have to be careful of when you're working with Fiori is that your script may overrun the application, meaning it may send in a statement into the application before the application, the Fiori application is actually ready to proceed. Great example of that is interacting with the search menu that you see we're interacting with right now. We have a very simple statement that's just a search statement and you specify what to search for. In Fiori, clicking on the magnifying glass, sometimes the search box is rendered slowly and the script would overrun that. So I actually broke that into three separate statements, clicking on the magnifying glass, finding the search box and, and typing the value in there, and then clicking on the magnifying glass again to ensure that uh, the script wasn't overrunning that. You also see another problem that we have in Fury here, where sometimes the information pop-up window doesn't provide the, the value that you need. So you can click on help and you can parse the information there to get, uh, in this case, the outbound delivery number. Another challenge that you have in, in automating against Fury is that uh, a lot of the text fields where you type values will put in a, a drop-down box after you've hovered over that field for a while to try to make it easier for the user to select a value from uh, uh, valid values in uh, that are displayed on the screen. The challenge with this is that that, that drop-down can hide the fields that are underneath that. So if you try to fill out the first field and you get that drop down, you can't actually see this the, the second field until you move out of that first field. To get around that, what you can do is when you're filling out forms is fill out your forms in the opposite direction of what you would normally do. Fill them out from bottom to top instead of top to bottom. That way when the pop-up, when the drop down happens, it's happening over fields that you've already hit. 
So right now we're, we're seeing, we're filling out the, uh, the outbound delivery information so that we can do a, a goods issue. Here we have again that the information in, in Fiori window did not give us uh, uh, the actual message where you could have clicked on help. In this particular case, we're updating an existing uh, document ID so we don't actually have to click on the help to do that. We can just click on exit and, and move forward. The other thing that you'll notice in here as well is that we are backing out to the main menu every single time. The reason that we're doing that is one, it's a very good practice to make sure that you always start and stop your, uh, your actions in the same place. So uh, this has been built with modular reusable actions so that essentially each step in, in each T code or form is a separate action so that you could potentially reuse those or you could loop them. For example, if you wanted to come in here and you wanted to loop through doing multiple documents and filling out multiple documents for creating uh, the billing document and, and have multiple delivery documents in there, you could do that uh, in, in, uh, by managing the data in the data sheets. It's also been built so that we can utilize this with value edge functional test. So if you wanted to do model based testing with this as well, potentially take your Signavio business process models and import those into value edge functional test so that you can uh, use a visual representation of the business process and put in dependency conditions. It is all, I also built the script in that manner as well. Here you can see an example where we overran the application again. We tried to click on the tile because the tile was visually present, but it wasn't ready to be acted against. So what would you do as a human? If the screen you were expecting after you click the tile didn't come up after a few seconds, you'd try clicking the tile again. And that's what's written into the script as well. And what you can see now is we're receiving in uh, the payment, uh, which is the last step in order to cash. And as you saw, we filled that out from the bottom forward. Once again, it didn't display the, uh, the information, the message uh, with the, uh, the payment document ID. So we had to click on help to, to bring that in as well. And then lastly, we're gracefully logging out of the application. Um, it's always a good practice unless you're doing like a performance test where you need to simulate the, the real user behavior of having dangling sessions. You wanna make sure you do that so that in your test environment, which usually isn't scaled uh, like your production one was to, uh, to show that. And you can see here too, you know, I put in a check to look for that, that text box on the information page. It didn't show, so I threw a failure into the log. You may choose not to do that uh, because this is known behavior, but I wanted to show that, that happening. Um, you can see in the logs, if I search on custom, you can see here where I'm capturing the uh, order number. Uh, if I get rid of the filter on my log, I can scroll up and see the checkpoint that I put in there and you can see the screenshot of, of what it was that I was checking. You can also check the uh, that there was a check mark that showed up to make sure instead of you know looking for a specific uh, error. And then uh, you can see at the end, we also click on the left triangle. So, so identifying objects uh, as a human would. Lastly, I also put into here the uh, into the logs so that uh, you can see if you just want to look at it from the logs perspective, what the, the different document IDs are, the different return values that you got back from SAP. Additionally, in the outbound delivery message, uh, sometimes you get it has been saved. Sometimes you get it has been saved and additional things that happened. So I'm just outputting which message we got was we got the just has been saved message. If you have additional questions or you'd like to see more, please feel free to reach out to your open text sales account representative. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.